welcome to the sixth episode of the 411. I'm Emily Woodall. And I'm Brock Cantrell. First off, Olivia Wolfram and George Simpson bring you a story on Young Life. For anyone interested in expanding their Christian beliefs, there is a Young Life chapter located in Springfield. Young Life meets every Monday at 727 and is free for everybody interested. Young Life starts with a group of adults called leaders that really love to hang out with high school students. and. Um, we just go and we'll go to before school lunches, games, and spend time with high school students and show them that we love them and that um, there is someone who is around that is older that wants to pursue them and just be with them and all the everyday life stuff. And um, we try to earn the right to be heard to and to have them talk to us and everything because we don't want to force ourselves on them. It's like totally relational. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, we have club and that's where we have um, crazy party. It's controlled chaos. It's absolute madness and it's a lot of fun and you just have to see it to believe it. Anyone who attends Young Life will be a large advocate for it. Not only is the crowd at Young Life large, they're extremely loyal too. People should go to Young Life because it meets like a lot of new people and you get to know a group of people that will love you and not judge you and like you make a lot of friends and you have fun every day. We go driving, we do crazy stuff like scavenger hunts or uh, paint wars, hoedowns. They're really fun. Um, I think Young Life has a big effect on high school students because you just notice people have like a confidence boost by the end of Young Life and they become here happy and even if you're like dead tired and like got two hours of sleep the night before you have energy and you are able to come to school and like it's like uh, infectious people will feel happy from it whether you're religious or not young life is a great opportunity to surround yourself with positive people signing out for the 411 glendale this is olivia wolfram and george timpson you are made for this have you wondered why prices in the cafeteria have gone up nick moore nathan bergstaller and ross harbach tell us why here recently, students who eat school lunches at Glendale have been unsatisfied with the school lunch food options and prices. I eat school lunch every single day. Every single day. I eat school lunch every day. Yeah, I eat school lunch. I think the prices are actually ridiculous this year. A lot more pricey than last year, actually. Like the Naked Juice, two seventy-five for a little bottle of steak. The prices. You know, whenever I get a pizza, I look at what it's made of, wheat bread, wheat bread. Like, it doesn't taste very good. And it's like a dollar twenty-five for the thing, you know. Well, one of the reasons why food prices are so high is because we, uh, we have tried to move to a healthier menu. And when you purchase food um, that's healthy, it's obviously going to cost more than maybe junk food. Because if you even, like, go to the grocery store and you see buy an apple, an apple is like 85 cents to a dollar, you can buy a candy bar for 50 cents. So the healthy stuff is generally more expensive. When compared, the food prices at Glenda are much higher than that of retail stores such as Walgreens. A 10 ounce bottle of Naked Juice is two seventy five at Glenda, while at Walgreens a 15 ounce bottle goes for three dollars. And a Fiji water is a dollar seventy five at Glenda, while at Walgreens you can get a 24 pack of water for three dollars. In conclusion, the food prices at Glendale run much higher than the average grocery stores, so students looking for cheaper, better food will have to look elsewhere. Signing out for the 411, this is Ross Harbach, Nick Moore, and Nathan Burkstall. Up next, Kennedy Graves and Emily Woodall show us how we can support breast cancer awareness. Uh, the Pink Cow is October 9th, and it'll be at home, it'll be against Kickapoo. Well, we have two games, and uh, one of them is away and one of them is at home. 
Uh, they're normally Kickapoo and Hillcrest games. Uh, we pass around buckets uh, that we collect donations for, for uh, breast cancer and stuff like that. And we also have uh, people there uh, on the benches that have or had cancer and we celebrate them. And um, Pink Out, we are, everything is pink. Uh, we have the lines for uh, the court, our jerseys, like everybody seems to wear pink, like their t-shirts and stuff. Um, we also have socks that are pink too, so we use those, but yeah. Some students have strong opinions about the enforcement of Glendale's dress code. Peyton Sheets and Lauren Beatty bring you more. Dress codes have been a topic of controversy within schools for years. Students have differing opinions on the dress code and its enforcement. We caught up with several Glendale students and an administrator to see what they had to say. The biggest dress code violations we see are inappropriate themes, drugs, alcohol, profanity, uh, and then also just different violations of our policies such as shorts being too, too short, too much skin being shown, those type of things. I do think the dress code is way too strict on girls and not strict enough on guys. It's not fair that we are over sexualized more or less. I think the actual dress code is strict but I think it's not enforced strictly. I think the dress code should be changed to where Girls can openly show their shoulders as long as it's not showing any private areas. And I feel like if we're allowed to, out of the house with it, then we should be allowed to school with it. I think the length of like shorts and skirts and um, t-shirts, like I know that crop tops are pretty in right now and I think those are appropriate with like in certain situations but not necessarily for school. I think they can be pretty distracting. Uh, I mean, I think our dress code, it goes for anybody. If, if there was a male that was wearing shorts that were too short, then we would ask them to change them. If there was a male that was exposing their midriff, we would ask them to change just as we would a female. So I don't think it's pointed at one over the other. And that, <clears throat> that stuff goes just towards eliminating distractions in the learning environment. Because like you said, males looking at females that wear those clothes or vice versa, they're not focused on learning at that time. There's other things that are distracting them from learning, so that's why it's such a big issue. Um, I don't think there is anything you can do to change the view because people are going to have their opinions on the dress code like either way. So It's how others react to it. They're teaching boys that it's like okay to react to my shoulder showing instead of teaching them like it's just a shoulder you need to respect her as a woman. Signing out for the 411, this is Lauren Beatty and Peyton Sheets. Tune in next week so we can tell you about athletes in the classroom. I'm Brock Hantrell. I'm Emily Woodall.